Thank you very much. And I know everybody's fatigue. Um, so I'll try to go through this uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, just to give uh, kudos to my colleagues in Atlanta, Anu and Colleen, who did all the work on this. I'm reporting out their work and as well the colleagues from the Ministry of Health and from the WHO office, both in Zanzibar and here, who helped support the campaign and the coverage survey. So we've talked a lot about uh, getting data in cholera hotspots, wash data, it's, it's not available. So this was one attempt to get it by combining with an OCV survey. So um, just some objectives of this, the idea was uh, to create baseline estimates for wash within specific cholera hotspots um, that we can use if we going to do interventions that we can measure progress over time. So if we only want to get a baseline and nothing's going to happen, we, we could do it differently. But if we want to have uh, numbers that we can compare pre and post or between locations, we might want to do a little bit more rigorous data collection so we have more uh, precise estimates. And this can be a standalone survey. So one way is just to go to the hotspot and do data collection, or we can try to piggyback on top of another survey, like an OCV survey, and add additional questions to get the wash estimates. So this, we're doing it both ways. And this was the first attempt to go on the back of an OCV survey to get wash questions, uh, uh, coverage numbers. And so the idea is we can leverage the resources from the OCV survey, combine them and, and get more from less money. And hopefully this will be part of cholera roadmaps to show progress. So, what our assumptions are that the cholera hotspots already defined. So when we arrived, there is a hotspot. Um, if there was a camp, uh, an OCV campaign, it would be in one or more hotspots. And these, we would use this to decide where to do the survey. Um, we assume that there are gonna be some wash interventions because so, if nothing's going to happen, why do we want to do a baseline? And if, if the interventions are not gonna start for three or five years, this information will be old. So we hope that there will be progress made small or large so that we can show some change over time. Uh, our assumption, we will do representative samples. So we're not gonna do convenient sample. We want something representative of the area so we can clearly say this is what the coverage is. Uh, we'll use standard questions from JMP so that we're, we can compare with other data that's collected from other uh, uh, data collection methods, standardized methodology. And we want a large enough sample so that we can compare over time or compare between locations. So enough power to make those comparisons. Okay. So this one was in Zanzibar was to uh, create uh, uh, estimates for the, uh, those areas targeted for the OCV campaign. We, so we took the standard OCV coverage survey and we added on wash questions and we added on some uh, community engagement questions also some people chimed in with some additional ones that we wanted to try. Uh, we used a multi-stage cluster survey um, and we added in free residual chlorine testing at every household that we went to. Um, and our plan was to do microbiological testing of source water and some household water, but because of during COVID, we could not get our, uh, our lab person there. So we did not actually do the, the microbiological testing. So just some background. So Zanzibar, there's two, two islands in Guja and Pemba, about 1.6 million persons total. They've had a, a, a number of outbreaks since 1978. So it is a, a cholera and endemic area. The OCV campaign was conducted in July and August of last year, targeting about 350,000 persons. Um, and the coverage survey, as I mentioned, was a collaboration between Ministry of Health, WHO and CDC. And that was done in November and December of last year. Okay, so this was sort of the, the steps to go through for this. The Ministry of Health identified the hotspot Shahias targeted by the campaign in both islands. And you can see those on the right. They're also ranked um, in terms of the severity. You can see down on the bottom, high, medium, and low. Um, and then we use those to decide how we are going to do our sampling uh, uh, for this, both for the coverage survey in the, in the WASH survey, and we are trying to decide, should we do one survey for the whole campaign? Should we do one for Anguja, one for Pemba? So there's, diff there's different permutations of different ways we could do this. Um, so just to, to go through how to calculate this, there's a standard WHO calculator for doing a post-OCV coverage survey, which is on the left here. 
and you with, with certain assumptions put in. And we had here the expected coverage, we used 50% because there was some reports that the two dose coverage was not too high. So we err on towards 50% to get the highest number. And it's about 1200 households just for the OCV, one OCV survey for the entire 350,000 persons. If we were to do just a wash baseline standalone, uh, we would use the calculation on the right with some variation, but we were using 80% expected say, access to safe to improved water. We could change that. Uh, a design effect of two because we're doing a cluster survey. It was about 600 households. It could be varied between 600 to 800, depending on the assumptions you make, but it's smaller um, just for a standalone wash survey. So just to keep that in mind. Um, so we went through the different options, one for both islands, uh, one for uh, each island individual, and we went through because the, there's cost implications if we increase and do two separate surveys. So two separate OCV surveys in each island would have been about 2,400 households. So it, gets, it starts to get large. So to, to skip ahead, this is what we decided to do and then based on the, on the priorities of the Ministry of Health, to do one survey for OCV to cover both of the islands. And if I went through quickly the, the numbers, but 90% of those targeted for the OCV campaign were on one island in Guja and 10% on the, on the, were on Pemba. So it kind of made sense just to combine them into one survey. So for, for the wash estimate, if we follow that, we could do the same 1200 households and get one wash estimate for both islands for those 350,000. But we were thinking about, we have all these different hotspots. Can we get some more specific estimates for uh, lower level? And we couldn't do the Shahiyas. There was a 30 some odd number of Shahiyas. That's too small to do a survey in each of those would have been too large. So we decided let's try for the districts. You can see the second uh, column there. Those are the districts. And if you, let me just walk away. Can I use your mic for a second? We look at where it says additional clusters. Uh, so the, the number of clusters in the, the fourth column is what we needed, 40 clusters of 30 for the OCV survey. And then in the two, co two columns down, additional clusters, we decided we could get separate estimates for three districts, Bagarabi, A, B, and Majini, by supplementing the, the number of clusters. So in, in effect, we increase the sampling in three districts, and we can get one coverage for the entire area plus estimates for each of those three districts. So that was the compromise we made. We'll get three district standalone estimates plus the overall coverage. And this, is, I'll just go through quickly through some of the results. So basically we got 95% of the people agreed to consented to the interview, um, only 12 refused. So very low uh, refusal rate. Um, you can see the breakdown by ages. So look at it, at, uh, I just go through a couple of keys. So we looked at what is the main water source. So there was a, a number of, uh, if you look all the way to the right is the, the total numbers and it's, it's weighted because we're oversampling. So about 24% were using borehole water. And then there was a large proportion, about 55, 56%, which were using piped water. And that could either be the main distribution system from the utility, but also a lot of small, little individual uh, networks that were set up with boreholes in an elevated tank, a water yard distributing to small areas. So the, we combined those together. Um, and then there was some you know, smaller water sources, dug wells, unprotected wells, et cetera. So if we put those into the standard categories, we can say you know, safely managed or basic plus, which implies some treatment about 36%, basic at about 56%, and then small numbers that are in the other categories. So pretty, pretty high basic or higher in these areas. Um, but when we look at how much of that water was treated, even though about 56% was piped water, only less than about 5% of all of the water had chlorine residual in it at the household level. So most of that water was untreated, which leaves it vulnerable to, to contamination. So that was, one of the findings is that a very little of the water, even through the, the pipe network and the small networks was being treated. And I just add, there are two interventions now that we're working with UNICEF on 
in terms of treating some of those small water systems and also a monitoring system for the piped water just so that we can follow to see whether we can increase the chlorination in these hotspots. So if we look at sanitation, similar, we can categorize. And again, you have one for the district A, district B, district C, and then the total uh, combined and, and each of those are weighted. And you can see the sanitation coverage for a flush toilet, poor, uh, 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 poor flush, pit latrine, et cetera. We can categorize those similarly into safely managed and basic and, and, and about 75% or in basic or higher for sanitation. And then similar for hygiene, we can look uh, both water and soap available, neither one or the other. And if we categorize those, about 55% were in the basic category for hygiene. So kind of a, a summary. And there's lots of other variables on, in, in questions uh, on, in addition to these, as well as all the OCV coverage data, which I'm not gonna present here. So in, in summary, uh, the wash coverage was relatively high. Uh, basic, or plus, basic plus or higher was about 36%, um, basic at 56, but access to treated water was very low access to basic sanitation is about 75% and to hand washing facilities was about 55%. So what did we learn from this? This was our kind of first pilot in putting these two pieces together. Um, so a wash coverage survey can be easily added on to an OCV survey. Just if we just keep the same sampling, we add on some more questions. We can add on free residual chlorine testing pretty easily, just train and provide the test kits. And we can do that pretty easily. Um, doing other parts, if we wanna do E. coli testing, that gets a little bit more complicated. Um, and then we can oversample if we want to get district level estimates that are not generated by the OCV survey. So we can take the OCV survey and then strategize. We wanna get separate estimates here, increase the sample in those areas and we can get uh, more specific estimates uh, if, if needed. Um, so for Zanzibar example, we increased the sample size from 1200 to about 1900 or close to 2000, and we ended up getting three additional district level estimates in addition to the overall. So it can be more cost effective to do it combined this way. However, um, we can't select exactly where we want to do the wash survey. We have to go along with the OCV survey. So it works well if there's good concordance between uh, the OCV campaign and where we want to get wash data. If it's a single hotspot with a campaign, that's easy. We just do the same the same survey. But if there's multiple hotspots, um, it becomes a little bit more complicated and we have to do some additional sampling. Um, and, and so uh, it can be a little bit complicated. I think the Zanzibar one was a little bit more complicated. We had very small size hotspots. So to get you, we couldn't get down to the Shahia level. It's just too small an area. So we have to combine those. Um, and the timing is dependent on the OCD coverage survey. So if we're not ready to do the wash one, we can't piggyback on the OCD one. So if we plan it out in advance though, we could do them both together and, and, and save resources uh, by combining them. So some future considerations just in doing this methodology. And I've mentioned in previous uh, discussions about this, should we be doing one baseline per hotspot or should we merge the hotspots together and do those estimates in a varies. So as an example in Harare, um, there's eight tier one high, high risk hotspots. Should we do a, a coverage survey in each of those? Or since they're all in the city, can we combine them and do them at once? And I think part of that depends on, is there gonna be interventions in all of them or one of them or multiple of those? That has to go into decision-making about where we want to get the wash data from. Um, so other questions, um, can we use these general wash estimates to prioritize specific wash interventions in Colorado hospitals? So we're getting coverage numbers but does that inform us what we should do in that hotspot to, to, uh, to upgrade the wash? And maybe yes, maybe I think it's more complicated than that because it doesn't tell us exactly what to do. That's the work that Pierre Eve and, and Christophe are working on, but maybe this will feed into your, into your work. Um, and then can we use the results to cost out? So some of the algorithms that are being used, can we use this data to say, this is what we need to estimate the cost of upgrading to 80% or 90% or whatever our target is. Um, so for us, next steps are, we want to do a standalone uh, baseline without the OCV part, and then do another OCV survey in a different type of context, just so that we can uh, 
add the microbiology part, but also try it in a different setting and see if we if we have any other lessons to be learned as well. Um, and then just this is just how we would do the the same sampling if it was just a standalone OCV survey. I don't I don't want to go through it, but it's basically the same methodology I presented before, but we without the OCV part. Um, but if anybody's interested, you can look at these later. Um, and just to thank my colleagues for all the work they put into this. Thank you.